find yourself in the Beachview area of Pittsburgh, check out the official pizza of this show, Slice on Broadway, sharing an abnormal obsession with pizza we can relate to. Check them out at SliceOnBroadway.com and tell them this show sent you. Guys, it's time to get geeky, get techy. It's the awesome cast, the final awesome cast of 2014. I'm Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on Twitter. <laughs> I'm sorry, you'll see what I'm talking about and what I'm laughing about in a minute. With me is an all-star cast ready to talk about the awesome things of the year. First of all, with us is everybody on the couch. <laughs> Here we are. Hey, we, got, we got Dutters, we got Will Rutherford of the panel ride, and we got Sheila with us here today. <laughs> Hi, guys. <laughs> we squeezed them all on the couch. <laughs> yeah, we need to get a picture of the couch when we're done. Yes. Oh, yes. Yes. You guys are going to be good there for an hour. <laughs> we're going to have to pry you out of there. Yes. It's a love scene. They're feeling love. Also with us on the line, also from up here in Pittsburgh, PA, she's uh, the, the the gal behind Big Big Design, Cynthia Kolosky. How you doing? I'm great. Hello. And also with... Well, although I'm sad that I don't have anyone sitting on my chair with me. No, it's not as crowded <laughs> on your end. Um, also, also not as crowded coming at us from Boston. You may see him if you're in Boston on on the TV. He's Jim Loke, a Pittsburgh original. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, hey, <laughs> what's going on, guys? Good to uh, good to see you as always, and uh, I'm sure that couch is going to be very well worn by the end of the night. I, I, I'm really glad that both of you are on here because both of you uh, uh, I, you need to defend your your predictions from last year. Because uh, Jim, I know Jim, you missed it because you were actually anchoring that night. Uh, but you, I was. you did. I, I was surprised when I watched back because I jumped in at the end with your email that we had missed um, in, in a special added on in my office iPhone uh, kind of uh, uh, situation. So, so I'm glad we could bring it right back around this time. Good. Yeah. I, and, and to be honest with you, I have no recollection of what that email was. Awesome. Awesome. I'll, I'll dig it up and I'll surprise myself. <laughs> don't don't scroll down in the document then. I want this to be a surprise. Oh, okay. I'm <laughs> um, so, uh, again, this is the awesome cast. Uh, we do this uh, typically every Tuesday night at live.sorgatronmedia.com uh, about 7 p.m. Eastern time. And uh, you can join us. We're at awesomecast.net. Follow us on Twitter at awesomecast. And you can please subscribe to us on iTunes, Stitcher, Spreaker, and YouTube. So, without any further ado, uh, we usually do our awesome things of the week, and we got so many people. I want to definitely get get straight into things. Uh, so, let's do our awesome things of the year. Uh, let's uh, let's first attack that couch over there. <laughs> uh, Dutters, what, what's your awesome thing of first. the year? Yeah, first. you get you get to go oh. first. Mm-mm. All right, Chilla. I'll go first because mine will probably be one of the quicker ones. Um, mine's going to be the Xbox One. Um, I know it came out last year. I didn't pick up mine until this year. Okay. Um, the feature functionality of the voice integration is is far and above, and the video pass-through is just amazing. And I, I look at things like the Chromecast and the Fire Stick and things like that, it, and this they can do like the voice search, but I'm not seeing cross app functionality. So Xbox, I'm guessing they either make their developers or they have some something in the platform that allows them to do more additional voice commands on a per app level. Um, so if you're in the Netflix app or if you're in the HBO app or you're in whatever app, um, you get you get more capabilities as well as the second screen capabilities on a, on a mobile device or on a tablet or on another windows device. Um, <clears throat> I'm definitely going to say having a kid this year, the Xbox one and being able to say Xbox pause, Xbox play, Xbox mute. Um, all of those capabilities have made it probably my, my awesome thing of the year. Yeah. For you, I mean, it's really kind of done the living room kind of full functionality thing yes. for you that's been like kind of the promise that well Microsoft of all people have been mm-hmm. promising for years. Yeah, uh, to me it's it's it they, they've hit everything they said they were going to do and a little bit more. Mm-hmm. Um I think there's but I think there's still a lot of room for Amazon, Google and Apple to grow and Roku. Um but I I think they're they're leading the race on this one. 
Awesome, awesome. And I don't even, I rarely play games on it. I rarely have time to play games. <laughs> so it's just like, <laughs> it, it, it's just like you took a tower and, and, and stuck it. Like, I know you're the person that has the tower that that's like, was your media center. And is that really replaced that whole concept for yes. you? Yes, because now they, they, they've had, they've, they've added on some stuff to be able to stream from internal servers to, I still use Apple TV because I do have some purchases mm-hmm. on iTunes, but yeah, it's 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 kind of my all-in-one platform, and I'm not paranoid about people watching me or whatever over Connect or Connects on all the time. Um, I'm hoping that Google does something because of the popularity of the platform to add like Hangouts or that to go past Skype and and bring other other um, video communications yeah um, platforms. And they always seem to be Skype. adding stuff to it too. Yeah. So there's definitely some wide plan. We've seen help outs in the last year, for instance, mm-hmm. on the platform. So we're seeing there's these things that can ride on top of it, I guess. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think I think there's definitely a, a long term plan for that. You know, we'll, we'll just see getting more and more. I, I'm surprised the stuff that pops up when I just week to week I see just new stuff. Like they added this applause functionality to, to the uh, on airs that just came out of nowhere. Um, but. Oh, good to see. Um, Jim, you got another one in here already. Um, this is interesting. Cause I, I, I've been curious about this because nobody I know with Comcast has really jumped into this yeah. concept. Uh, so so tell me about this. All right. So, so mine is the Xfinity X1 platform. And, and I know that uh, a lot of people have cut the cord, and I think it's a brilliant idea to do that. In fact, when I moved into a new apartment, that's what my plan was to do. I was going to cut the cord and not worry about cable and stream everything. But then uh, I decided at the very last minute, you know, I should, I work in TV. I probably should have TV service. Uh, so, uh, <laughs> it's, you know, it's just, just, just out on a limb. Um, so I signed up with Comcast. They, 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 they set up this Xfinity X1 network. And, and granted, at the core, it is a cable box. Right. But what they've been able to do is they've finally been able to bridge that gap between uh, between tablet, between phone, between between TV, because uh, they've they've also changed the whole interface. So what what I like about it is when I turn the TV on, rather than punching in a channel, I spell out you know what I want to watch, and and then it it is it has combined the live television function with on demand. So if I say Parks and Recreation, and Parks and Rec is on at that moment, it'll say okay Parks and Rec's on. And these episodes are available on demand, and you know you can access them free. Uh, they also have several apps. And at first, it was you had to download all your recorded programs onto the app. Well, now it, it's all cloud-based from the DVR, so uh, I can watch my DVR from my iPad. Oh. Oh, look at that pose. Oh, we, we lost them as I brought up the stuff for Xfinity. <laughs> uh, I don't know what happened to him. Maybe we lost him. All right, we'll, we'll see. Well, well, he's on Comcast, so we know what his internet's like. Um, but uh, well, I guess I guess the second that, you know, from what I'm hearing, uh, it, it sounds like Xfinity's, there he goes. <laughs> it sounds like Xfinity's kind of done uh, what we've been expecting with Xbox, with the old Google TV kind of promised this, and, and, and kind of dropped everything on one interface. Um, oh, I think he's back. I think he's back. Hey, by the way, I should mention my internet's from Comcast. Yeah, yeah, I think we figured that out. That, that's that's the thing. You know, it's funny because I actually had an Xfinity guy on my doorstep about two weeks ago, so and did I, we. I had some of this conversation they, <laughs> with them. They send me they send me snail mail on a near daily oh, basis. Oh, they send me yeah. them Dish Network everything. It doesn't it doesn't even matter. And it, it started when I got Verizon. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, big time. Um, Verizon say, probably I, sells your information to that's Comcast exactly right. to make an extra buck. <laughs> that's exactly right. I say I have Xfinity and I still get the mail. <laughs> yeah, and in yeah. the Pittsburgh area, they they do work in in concert together. In fact, in Green Tree, if you go out Green Tree Hill uh, and you look over at Parkway Center, and there's the building that says um, I think Comcast Spotlight or mm-hmm. the building it says yeah. Comcast. They actually do the local advertising for Verizon FiOS as well as Comcast. Really? <laughs> yeah, yeah. That, that that's that was sort of a, well, that... a, a deal that was made. Um, let me just fin- finish yeah, up. I yeah. apologize. I don't know what happened, but um, nonetheless. So, so I like the fact that it's kind of integrated everything into one. Uh, I'm able to pull up DVR programs from wherever I go on my iPad. It nice. lacks the live TV function. I wish it had the live TV, which it does not. But that said, 
um, I think that it is a very compelling argument for those of us who are on the fence about cutting the cord because you're still able to stream so much and you're still able to access so much on-demand content. Um, but that said, I think that you really have to figure out, okay, is it still worth $120 a month, which is what I'm paying for cable, for internet, for phone. Uh, you know, Comcast has tried to roll out a home phone product that is, you know, far better than what we've seen in the past because, I, again, it's, it's almost like a Google Voice where you can make the calls on your iPad um, and you can make phone calls and, and, and text from your TV. But um, it's interesting. It's, it's, it's a great concept. And uh, I think that this is going to be the last product you'll see, you know, the, the big cable provider, big television providers. I think it's the best, their best bet to uh, try to compete. Mm -hmm. So. Jim, does um does that include like uh, can you connect into YouTube and things like that with yeah. uh, with that same system? Yeah, there's uh, you, I believe that I have not tried the if if there is I haven't tried it, but but there's also there's several I mean they they call them apps. Um, you know there's a Facebook component, there's a Twitter component. Um, I do believe that there's some sort of YouTube functionality, so they do have that built in, which is which is nice, and that gives you that flexibility. Yeah, because I think some of these systems, and actually we're getting into what I, is going to be my prediction for next year, but some of these have. Well, maybe I'll wait till we talk about next year. I'll just stop. <laughs> sure, sure, sure. Um, yeah, we, we, we were actually talking about when, when you dropped off for a moment there. Like, this really kind of answers the question we were, we've were we been uh, looking for with the uh, all the way back to Google TV saying they were going to integrate everything into one place or what Xbox One is doing for Chilla, where it's, I mean, because you have mm -hmm. that pass through situation and now, uh, you know, using their brand of apps and everything, you can find your stuff. But, but, but it's also, I mean, do you find since there, you are kind of passing through another system? Them, does that kind of you feel I don't use make the, it kludgy or? no because I don't uh, and I don't use the one guide that often but I will say Xbox watch ABC or Xbox yeah, yeah. go to HBO um, I don't feel like it's that kludgy but I'm not I'm I'm not using their Xbox one guide that often um, in fact very rarely but I often know what I want to watch and there's something I'm there to watch mm -hmm. otherwise it is xbox watch hgtv or or and i i list out different show like different channels that i want to hop back and forth to mm -hmm. um it doesn't do a really it doesn't do all that great of a job working with the dvr and there is no unified search which i wish there was where i could where it would search across hbo go and netflix and Amazon Prime because I have all that content right there. Right. Um, right. That's one thing. Loke is. It, you were saying you have YouTube and you have things like that. Do they have? I, I kind of view sometimes Netflix as a competitor to Comcast. Can you get to Netflix and Amazon no, Prime? No, you can't. I mean, I have a I have a Vizio smart TV, so that's how I access. I also have an Apple TV. I mean, it's funny. Because, yeah. It's amazing because <clears throat> you consider how much. Um, you know, the whole concept of smart TVs was was sort of <laughs> sort of a a. a a futuristic deal and you know i bought a 400 dollars vizio tv that, that has everything packed inside and it's it's fast and it's responsive and i i really enjoy you know i really enjoy it what i will say and then i'll then i'll wrap my part up is this 20 and this is not my prediction but i think 2015 is going to be interesting because 2015 is the year that hbo is going to be offered as a standalone service um they haven't decided if it's going to be a carbon copy of hbo go but you're going to be able to buy a streaming HBO subscription. I think Showtime's following suit. CBS for six dollars a month. But you know, <laughs> why, why the hell would you want to watch? You know, why why the hell would you pay six dollars to watch KDK? I mean, come on, you know. Um, <laughs> I would. I worked there for six years. And I wouldn't pay six dollars to watch KDK. Oh wow! But, you know, they, 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 <laughs> take they, that, Matt Carlin's. <laughs> 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 uh, but, but no, they, they, they you know they have a streaming service now. So a lot of these big providers are moving towards that. And of course, Comcast is, you know, they own NBC. Um, so I do see a little NBC bias in some of the, uh, some of the content delivery, but all things considered, it's been a, it's been, it's been a good, um, it's been a good experience. It, it kind of makes, it makes the whole process of, of, of watching TV a, a little more, uh, a little more fun, a little more responsive. And, you know, there's still, still bugs in the system they're trying to work through. But I, I don't know. I, I'm pretty sure they're rolling out in Pittsburgh. Yeah, they are rolling out in Pittsburgh. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but, yeah um, I think it was one of the first markets. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, but but it's uh, um, yeah. That that, that I, as as much as I hate to give Comcast any credit, uh, for doing anything innovative, 
they, they kind of did something pretty yeah they, here. they really stepped up because verizon when fios came out it was kind of next generation and and, and comcast needed to they really needed to and, and yeah and and all this other stuff the core cutting stuff has has really kind of sparked some innovation on their end and that's good to see we'll see if it gets updated for the next 10 years but you know as, as it goes <laughs> i remember back in what 2000 i think it was 2008 or 2009 when verizon announced fios was coming to pittsburgh and i i can tell you where i was i covered the press conference out in robinson it was me and trisha Pittman were the two reporters that are covering it and they're um and it was it was a, what were they widget? I mean, the, the whole concept. Of oh yeah, was, widgets. You know, that oh, was such a big deal back then. It's giving me shivers. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Dutters, I see you got something lined up here. What's your awesome thing of the year? Oh, cheese! I'm really into cheese. cheese. <laughs> if you look at the doc, I'm really into cheese. <laughs> wow. Uh, no, my two All Stars of the year are, are the uh, HP Envy laptop, the touchscreen, and um, Chromecast, because that really brought my mom into the future of technology, because uh, I, I couldn't tell you how many times I watched her struggle with my uh, MacBook trying to touch the screen. So when it was the same time for her, <laughs> yeah, I was like, no, it doesn't work that way, Mom. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so she's on mm -hmm. fingerprints all over my screen. Mm -hmm. So it was time for her to get a laptop. The uh, HP Envy was clutch in that regard, because then she can still touch the screen and she's still able. And she's uh, uh, well versed at the Chromecast at this point. And nice. We we are watching uh, my sister-in-law my brother's uh baby's uh, sonogram on the big screen which she was pretty impressed with <laughs> so we're all the future of technology at mama dutter's house so yes thank you hp envy for your touch screen <laughs> <laughs> is that one of those like fold back ones oh we lost no. we lost okay again no it's it's like a regular laptop mm -hmm. legitimate it's like the 15 but it's the touchy one yeah it's got a touchy screen and a keyboard it's it's nice yeah i really like that we were looking at a lot of a lot of those for we're still kind of looking at laptops for missy mm -hmm. you know i'm just like well maybe maybe this one because it's just like the macbook air is so expensive and that's really the kind of the mm -hmm. the limiter right now so um i, I don't know uh, see if we got low k back uh what's that i'm here i guess i i, I don't know what's going on here so <laughs> i will Aww. work on the video but i can hear you right that's now. okay so you got a little bit of break um what about you will do you have something uh i do uh this is all kind of off the cuff because uh i wasn't expecting to be on the show that's okay you're um, just like you were you were here uh, that's true um well katie uh reminded me of something i want to give i'm gonna i want to give an honorable mention to um the kindle paperwhite okay because my wow. grandmother got a kindle paperwhite uh for christmas last year and she reads books uh at a an astonishing rate wow just like just she'll blow through like 50 books in a month Wow. It's crazy. She loves her her Kindle Paperwhite, and you know, every time I go home, I you know delete the books she doesn't want to read anymore. Um, you know, up, update it, upload new books, and everything like that. And it has um, it has really been you know an awesome thing for her, frankly. Um, now, as for me, um, you mentioned that I am uh, host of the podcast Panel Riot, which is true, and uh, part of the Sorgatron Media Podcast of Network, the, of course. Sorgatron Media, the trust your trusted source. Yes, for quality <laughs> podcast quality. Um, what? Right? Yeah. <laughs> sure. Um, oh, I got to end over show with that now. <laughs> <laughs> um, so a huge uh, uh, advantage, I guess, to be being able to talk about all things comic books is the Marvel Unlimited app, which really I feel came into its own this year. Mm -hmm. um, it's a huge back catalog of uh, Marvel comics, so I'm not going to comic book stores and just kind of like thumbing through the, the stacks and everything like that. And... Um, uh, anytime I want to read something, I can just see if it's on the app, pull it up, and they're uh, what is it? They're like how many months behind is it? For like the new six comments? months, it like seems. Six months, yeah. From what I'm seeing, yeah, which totally like, makes I, sense. I'm just getting into. I noticed like like Original Sin uh, uh, issue four just came out this week. Mm -hmm. when I was going through stuff today, yeah. so um, and, and I second this as well. I, yeah, this has been great amazing tool. for getting me just neck deep in the comics. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and it's just tremendous, and I I just love burning through series. I, I I'm a binger. Like I, I Netflix binge mm -hmm. comic books, you know, and, and I'm always trying to find that time to to like, OK, when can I have a couple hours? And I can just read a mm -hmm. lot of comics and have that access and have that question. Are we watching a Guardians of the Galaxy or a Big Hero 6? I was like, OK, where did this come from? Exactly. And a lot yeah. of it's right there. So awesome. the other nice thing about comics and, um, you know, long storylines and collections like that, reading it, you know, week to week and month to month is one thing. But it's a completely different experience when you get to see the entire story mm -hmm. as one chunk you know what i mean and see it all at once 
Um, and really, you can go back and like the original Sin storyline that's, you know, it's on the Unlimited app now, but I read it as it was coming out month to month. And um, seeing that as one coherent storyline, it, it's, it's almost a completely different thing than the long drawn out month to month stuff. Yeah, it's great. Yeah, it's awesome. It's awesome. Cindy, what about you? Well, I I was tempted. I mean, after after Chill is talking about um, something that was not too new to the world, but new to him, I was tempted to say PlayStation Three because I finally caught one, <laughs> so that I could play Tomb Raider. And then now I'm only playing video games. Now I'm not reading fiction anymore. I'm just playing video games. So it's really <laughs> been going back to my roots. You know, my you know Atari type style. I was really big into Tomb Raider back in the first you know PlayStation and whatnot. But but anyway, but so. Uh, but really what it is is my iPhone. I mean, because I, the iPhone 6, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Is, uh, never apart from me. It's different. I, I have a different relationship with the iPhone 6 than I have had with other cell phones in general and even with other iPhones, even the 5. And I've never been the sort of person who gets a, a device like the minute it comes out because I, I believe in the second mover advantage. Let the other people deal with the early bugs and whatnot, and then I'll just come in after that's all been solved. But for whatever reason, uh, I, actually because of an AT and T trade in little program, oh oh I traded oh, it in. we got we got we got a shot up here. We got a show because everybody's <laughs> holding up their iPhone. <laughs> Everybody on the couch has an iPhone six. That's not correct. a plus. It's a six. Just a six. Mm-hmm. But it is the perfect size. I mean, I know everyone thought it was going to be too large, but mm-hmm. it is the right size of, for a phone. Now I don't need my mini. You know? I'm sitting here as I, I've, you know, how many times over the last couple of months? Because obviously everybody I know pr- pretty much has an iPhone 6 at this point. <laughs> and then here I am with my 5S feeling like I did with my 4 when everybody got the 5. <laughs> that I was like, well, maybe this could be a little bigger, you know. Um, but I, I'm cool with that because that, I get used to the idea of having a bigger phone before I jump into it. Because I get yeah. to handle everybody else's, you know. Um, but... That's awesome. But so, I don't know why. Why ahead. should why should just that little tiny bit of size? So it's not just the size. I mean, there's some of the other pieces that are parts of it. But right. I, I really feel like I'm using it. I'm, I have it, and I use it to just read everything way more than I did previous phones. Apple yeah. Pay is amazing. That, that, I'm loving a, Apple that's Pay. That's a big Gosh, thing. It is. Yeah. 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 I'm I'm really liking, and and it's funny because like if you don't have Apple Pay, I'm like. I can't. I can't even shop here anymore. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's the whole controversy, and, and by the way, I, I'm, I'm trying on my iPad, so forgive oh, me if the there you go. Oh, that's going to work that, better for you. I, that I, usually I, ends I up working best there. if you're having problems with the laptop or something. Google services yeah. better on the iPad. There you go. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> but um, the controversy involving uh, CBS, you know, CBS is based in Pawtucket, Rhode Island, which is about you know uh, an hour away from here. Um, uh, in my neighborhood, I get out of the corner. There's a CBS, and across the street is another CBS. And there's also a Walgreens and I've been always loyal to CVS, but you know, I, and I used Apple pay there the first day, but they shut the system down and I find myself going into Walgreens because, you know, because I can use the phone. And, and if I want to go to, if I want to take a, you know, take a walk through my neighborhood, I don't need to take my wallet with me. I got my phone. Mm-hmm. That's exactly it. That's nice. You're not going to leave your phone behind. No, exactly. Uh, it, like the couple times we've left our phones behind, like uh, 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 Missy left her phone at, here for a day and i think she was about to lose her mind wasn't there there's some there's some state that's going to move their driver's license to the to a phone app really hmm. yeah some wow. there, there's somebody's looking for looking to do it mm-hmm. so now you won't need you won't need anything other than your phone so so for me and then when they can embed that in my arm then i'm really going to be happy <laughs> <laughs> you and chachi you and chachi with this arm thing um, so uh, kind of talking about the size thing, um, I, kind of, I think I'm going to be going through a little bit of a, a similar thing, um, because, uh, I, I, my awesome thing, and, and, and I know, uh, wheels is saying the same thing in the chat room here, uh, is really the Nexus seven because one, it's introduced me to Google Android for over the last year ish. Um, it, it's really an interesting side effect because I got it because I had Google glass and I got it so I could. Somebody just booted up. Um, (laughs) (laughs) um, But uh, I got it because just the interface better with the Google Glass. And I ended up kind of falling in love with it, you know, 
Uh, at the time, I think it was the first device with KitKat. Of course, it just got updated to Lollipop. I'm kind of digging the changes. It's kind of smooth. It's smoothing the rough edges of, of Android, and, and to see that progress, and it, it's really mature, and I feel ready. And we've talked about in the past few weeks how I think it's not a bad thing you can get one of these for a hundred bucks, and and a fa- I'm not worried about my family members as much as I used to be, you know. Um, Come on. And and <laughs> is Come the on. dog back? <laughs> Come on. <laughs> They're yes, all no. Kidding. <laughs> no. um, but I feel like I'm going to go through the size thing again because I'm going to try. Uh, we've there's a little bit of trade just happened. If we can reveal this, Chilla, uh, we had a little bit of a trade, and uh, it's funny because I'm watching last Carla year's... for Missy. <laughs> What? Uh, Carla from Missy. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Awesome Cast Wife Swap. Um, There's three keys in the bowl. And, and the funny part is she's upstairs and only heard my half of that conversation. Uh-huh. Um, so thanks, Jim. Uh, but but last year we were talking, I was wearing my Google Glass. We were talking about it. We were talking about wearables wearables and personal cloud. And uh, Chilla was there with his uh, new, brand new yeah. uh, Pebble Watch at the time. And here we are. Uh, we just switched uh i i have his pebble and I, actually a pebble and an ipad um for for the google glass uh, so i'm going to be getting used to that bigger size again this is perfect for uh probably using this thing on a on a, a, a flight here in a great week. for comics great for comics oh, but yes. i've loved it in, in the second year marvel unlimited because that's the reason i love the nexus 7 because it's perfect to sit there in bed and and just read some comics mm-hmm. you know um now that the app has become the because marvel unlimited a year ago sucked it was yep. so janky it, it, it didn't it didn't flip the pages right half the time it crashed it still kind of crashes but it's not as dire a thing if it crashes and i had been trying to use it on my ipad one as well and the ipad one just kind of sits there on my desk in that keyboard dock and and maybe i'll get facebook messages and stuff um but uh it, it'll be interesting to kind of see see the problem i had with an ipad is i'm reading my comic books and as i get tired and it bops me in the face <laughs> I've, had, I've had the bop in the and face. the ipad yeah. one is heavy guys it doesn't seem like it but it's it's got some weight to it it probably weighs as much as this one does with the case so there there's a brand and i'm going to jump jump in here since you have both devices now the nexus and the uh ipad there's a there's a company and i think it's like it's moko m-o-k-o if you check them out on amazon mm-hmm. they make a beautiful case that actually Ooh. has kind of a wrap so this is my nexus 7 um it kind of has a has a black wrap around but then it has actually a thing for your hand to go in which i use this on the train all That's, the time i've loved uh my first i had a case for for my first ipad that was like that with the, with the hand thing um really nice for walking around because i think i think at the time when i worked at the day job i would walk around with that you know you know as i walked around the office you know mm-hmm. and uh yeah just to have that little extra handle on it it's so big i used to have an ipad one and i i got rid of it eventually and and now I have an iPad Mini, and it's weird to see the full size one. Mm-hmm. It's so big. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's kind of that's kind of what I'm going through. Like sometimes I'll I'll just like pick up the iPad and just like start reading something with it. And I'm like, wow, yeah. wow. <laughs> I didn't think I wanted a smaller one, but I'm kind of okay with a seven inch. And also introducing that 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 smaller size, which has led to this hundred dollar tablet concept. Mm-hmm. You know, in that in that similar vein, that similar experience. My friend at work has an iPhone 4s, and every now and then <laughs> she'll ask me to fix something on it. And it's like looking into a teeny tiny window. I know. It's so <laughs> weird. It's crazy. Look, I wish the Nexus I wish the Nexus they would have gotten rid of the the top and bottom bezel. That big thick black bezel on the top and bottom. You mean on the sides or the Well, top it and depends bottom? on how you hold it. I like it. I like it on, on <laughs> I like it on the Nexus because I especially reading those comic books is I just grip that bottom corner and I'm good to go. And it gives me a place to put my thumb without accidentally swapping up, switching up the, the screen. Uh, and it's it's so thin on the Nexus Seven that if I'm high, if I just have my thumb kind of up the side, uh, sometimes I'll trigger that, that page, the next page on it. So okay. you you need that for certain instances, you know. But but again, if you have a case like that, then it's not a big. But yeah. I go naked with my tablets. Go naked. I go tablet naked, almost ta- almost phone naked. I got a bumper. The bumper seems to be all I need at this point. Well, we're know. talking about uh, tablets and tablet-like devices. I would like to give a shout-out to my old-school 3G uh, real simple keyboard Kindle, <laughs> which <laughs> I've used I've used the Paperwhite Kindles, I've used the Kindle Fire, and that is still my favorite Kindle. It is funny because um, I, I, somebody uh, – the Kindle also ends up to be the thing in the bottom of a drawer now. Yes. Uh, is that on the Sprint Network or something like that? <laughs> it's, it's got WhisperSync, yeah. 
But is what's that, it, is it through Sprint? I think it's actually across. Do they the brand Sprint. it? I have no idea. No, I don't think they branded it. But I, I think it's, it's just kind of quietly through and said, like, "Oh yeah, we're on yeah, this network." Yeah, yeah, there's no. It's it works great. It's amazing. It's in my bag right now. That dog is loving that action over yeah. there. By the way. <laughs> yeah, to the viewers at home, I'm petting the dog. I'm not gently stroking Katie. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it looks like. She's like just off camera. <laughs> <laughs> Wicket the podcast dog joins us again. Um, awesome. Uh, I think that's everybody. Everybody for awesome things, right? Uh, we do have some some things that were sent in. We got one email from Alex Cars. He actually has an awesome thing of the week. Congratulations. Now this is your awesome thing of the year. Uh, <laughs> you've just been upgraded. Hope you really liked it. <laughs> for his uh, Neeson, Neeson will record a video endorsing your skills which you can add to your LinkedIn profile. Yes, like and taken. If you have a particular set of skills, <laughs> and apparently if you go to LinkedIn, they will do a video with your skills. Let's see. I think we got a sample here uh, for you guys here in, in the audience. Um, yeah, so uh, that's awesome. <laughs> of course, Taken 3, we just talked about this on, on the on the uh, 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 Rambling Movie Minute. Uh, but uh, Taken 3 coming up here at the beginning of uh, January, I think. So a little bit of that. So thanks, Alex Cars, for your <laughs> now awesome thing of the year. Um, and also, like I said, uh, Wheels was in the chat room saying uh, Nexus 7, and he's loving, of course, the new uh, OS. I, I got it late last week. Chilla, I think you got it like a little bit before that. Um, and he says he just got his recently as well. Which the Lollipop? Yeah, the lollipop. Yes, and also I, I skipped over five o, and yeah, it pop. mine, like when they the day that they announced five dot o dot one. Yes, I immediately got a notification on my device to update. Really? Yeah, because I think I heard about yours, and I was checking mine. Because I kept and, and I kept tapping update, later. like I was yeah. tapping update, like <laughs> I think twenty four times. I think a they day. penalize you <laughs> if they see you doing that. Um, it's like when you click the mouse like a bunch of times, and then your your computer just explodes <laughs> with new windows, and you're just screwed. I wonder. I was wondering if they like somehow queried the apps on the device and compatibility issues and things of that and use that could information be. that could be to make sure that you are a good candidate oh he's to got the uh, wb network app and we know we have a problem with 5.0 yeah. let's wait until that gets updated and fixed before we push it out you know like because I, I have a lot of corporate i have corporate apps on my device and my device is under management mm -hmm. so i was wondering if they somehow kind of look into that and say you know what this isn't a good we're, we're not ready for you're this not yet. a good candidate we're, yeah. we're just not going to push it for you yeah yeah i could see that happening um he also likes chromecast i think things like chromecast we're seeing these tv sticks pop up all over the place i where did i put it where did, where did i put the fire stick i lost it, it was over no, I gave hold it on you. let me pull it from somewhere it was over here <laughs> oh, boom wait, wait, that was, oh, there it is. Well, actually... <laughs> were you really sitting on it <laughs> From out of nowhere. I just got that. It's very durable. <laughs> well, you got like the Fire TV stick. You got Roku sticks. You have, you have the Chromecast. Um, mm -hmm. Back it's from where it's came. And like, like we mentioned, like, like, you know, moms and grandmas are, are able to use these things. Um, and, and that's really awesome, too. So thanks, Bills. The, the one thing that I really like about the Chromecast, and I've actually started to use mine, it, I've, I've had it for a year. It sat in the box for 11 and a half months. You also I, I have how many things connected to your television. Yes, Let's that's, be that's honest about true. this. Like I'm saying, I have a lot of overlap between the Chromecast and the Fire TV, I realize. So, <laughs> but, um, but no, but I, I like how they're, I like how they're updating. Mm -hmm. they're, they're updating capabilities continually. I think even this week they updated to allow guest mode. Mm -hmm. Where you can put your device where anybody. I noticed the uh, screencast mm -hmm. in uh, Lollipop on the mm -hmm. Nexus is yeah. right there under the swipe down for settings. Yep. Well, I haven't tested it up too much. Oh, cookies are in here. Wife of the show <laughs> is, is, the is giving They're the cookies. cookies. They are. If those really look good. Go to solstice.com. Your wife has some hot cookies. Oh, <laughs> well, while they're eating, let's 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 take a quick break. We definitely want to give a big shout out to our friends at Slice on Broadway up here in the South Hills of Pittsburgh. As I get a cookie, it's cookie time. Um, but uh, they were really cool with us. We have a lot of people. Obviously, they're all sitting on the couch at the same time, right? Um, but <laughs> we have a lot of people, so we we were gonna go, uh, you know, just get an extra pizza, and they threw it in. Uh, we've they we've been with they've been with us for almost a year. Uh, uh prime pizza for guests here on Tuesday nights. Uh, really awesome stuff. How we were just there uh, this weekend, Katie, right? Mm -hmm. Um, the 
you know, have some uh, slaughterhouse and, and buffalo chicken <laughs> pizza and uh, the greatest names, too. Uh, go check them out. SliceOnBroadway.com. They're up here on Broadway Avenue in Beachview, right along the tracks. And, of course, uh, Main Street down in Carnegie, PA. Carnegie, PA, Mad Mike. Carnegie. Um, but uh, anyways, uh, with that, yeah, please go check them out. Follow them on Twitter, Facebook, and, uh, and, and Instagram. Definitely Instagram. You will get hungry. So with that, it's uh, prediction time, guys, and uh, let's go through the, uh, the the lineup of last year's predictions. Um, I have some side notes here because we had some general discussions before we really got into everybody's picks. Uh, apparently, I didn't like how Hootsuite uh, didn't push pictures to Twitter, and I think, Cindy, you were giving me a workaround for that, uh, and, and, and they work now. I, I can completely uh, uh, twit pick things via Hootsuite, and plus they had a big redesign here in the last couple of months. Um and they actually, they actually did a, a fun thing. I don't think we talked about it on the show. Uh, Hootsuite did a video with their developers reading the comments about their design before they redesigned it. Like all the, like, this is a pile of garbage. This is a piece of, you know, you know, S, you know, and all that kind of stuff. And like, that was, that was like the headline. And they're just like, it, it was it was a fun video and a fun way for them to turn because it, it did look like it hadn't been updated for several years. It was starting to age. Now it looks more you know smooth. Everything's going white, right? It was that still ugly web page gray thing mm-hmm. going on and felt really kind of you know kind of kludgy, right? Um, but you know, good on them. We also talked about the rise of eye beacons. Have eye beacons still been a thing, or did this kind of flatten? I think they're still a thing. I don't think it's flattened. I, it's I, just quietly there, and we don't think about it anymore. Actually, wait. It, that thing where the apps pop up in the corner is that an eye beacon? No. Nah. Yeah. Is it? That is a... Yeah, yeah. That's what those are. In that case, I'm getting a lot of them. Yes, I am getting. Well, and I think it's. I think we're we're approaching the real rise of the eye beacon. I think they're all the eye beacons have been deployed and they're <laughs> they're like sleepers. <laughs> they're sleepers, <laughs> and and they're, they're waiting for their rise. I think I think that's going to be the. And and I don't want to get into my prediction Ooh, just yet, but I think I think we're going to see a lot out of those types of technology this year. Awesome. Sorry, I ate a cookie. Bad, <laughs> bad, bad hostmanship. Um, um, Loki doesn't eat on the air. He's on. He's a complete professional, right? I, I drink on the air. So that's <laughs> <laughs> he's on. He's on his sixth beer. There you go. Ginger land. Land. <laughs> uh, we also we had Munz on last week in, or last week last year, and uh, he said that Apple would would be oh there's a name in front of that a, Apple would be making a move on search. Didn't really see that. They're mm-hmm. still they're still riding that Bing train as far as Siri goes, at least. Bing Juggalo train. John, I believe it was in the chat or tweeted us or something. He said talks about Disney buying Nintendo. There's been a lot of talk about that. I, I think it's not realistic, like financially. But there was a lot of there's a great theory article I read on like Polygon about it, and it really has me excited for the idea. Um, I would love to see their marketing machine get behind Mario, like we've seen with Star Wars, like we've seen with Marvel. <coughs> Excuse me, Cookie. Um, we also had uh, as far as people that weren't here that aren't here the, this year, uh, Frank Fuzzwad, Android, Google Now integration, um, also in Chromecast during TV watching. We're not seeing that. Well, wait, have you no- have you? Have you done that or experienced that? What? So if you pop Google Now and it, I don't know how it oh. see, and you have a smart TV, it sees the TV on your home network. Oh, so I haven't I, seen that. So I have no. a Samsung TV, and if if I pop open the Nexus, the Nexus device or any device with Google Now on it, mm-hmm. it sees my TV on the network. It doesn't know what's playing on it. It says tap here to listen and you tap okay, i've seen the listen thing but that's saying but that i think yahoo did this too and it's listening i think to your tv to figure and out based what you're on watching that, yeah it's like it's like it's doing a um uh not what is that shazam mm-hmm. and because it knows what's on tv right now it matches something we got we got somebody yeah we got somebody got got a phone thing going on somewhere we'll figure it out we'll figure it out <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Sorry for the buzz, guys. Um, anyways, we got a lot of technology down here. Um, but no, 
But but it's not really like listening to the Chromecast itself. I don't think. Now I wonder. No, if, it's not. I wonder no. if it is uh, something like that information on what you do watch on the Chromecast, like with Netflix and everything. It was weird because both of you guys just like raised your phones. At the yeah, same I noticed time that. And, and <laughs> just really... we just went whoop. <laughs> <laughs> like you're checking uh, uh, something. Um, but uh, but no, you, I, I, well, I, I, I guess I read this as Android Google Now integration. During TV watching, also in Chrome, Chromecast during TV. Well, like, I thought that, that was, was two things. Two he, he was talking things. about having more, I think, more Google Now in Android. And then also, okay. like, one thing they could do is have Google Now, like, have stuff pop up on the screen while you're watching something on Chromecast. Like, that was, it was, it was kind of, I think I wrote it weird, weird. I was kind of a, trying to interpret it. So, um, I don't know. I think it's still coming. You know, Chromecast is still, like, adding apps that should have been there, like, a year ago, mm-hmm. it feels like. There's a nice collection of them right now, but like, <laughs> what's happening over there? <laughs> Nothing. All right, uh, Cindy, you said that there'd be a standards consensus on internet appliances to keep it. F- I think I think I might have said there would need to be one. There needs to be because the the, the idea was without one, yeah, normal people aren't going to use this stuff. I remember what right. part of the conversation. It's just too much. It's just too yeah. much trouble unless you are a, you know, a, one of us. You know, unless you're the kind of person <laughs> who geeks out over connecting up their world. Exactly. You're exactly. just not going to do it. I mean, like your TV, your your refrigerator is not going to tell you when to uh, when you need more milk. Is, right. Is the cost one right? Right. Right. I, I, do we do we really see that in 2014? You think? I mean, I, I don't think. I don't. I think I'm hearing. I mean, I I think I'm seeing less about the Internet of Things after June. I don't know why. Like the first half of the year, it was still being talked about, and now Probably not so much. But I don't know. Does anyone I think, else? I think now it's more about wearables. So, so I think that's that's actually going to be my 2015 prediction. Okay. Oh. I think something. I think something occurred with that consensus and the standard across. Google and Apple and everybody else took longer to adopt because what I just heard was Apple finally just finished their M- MFI made made for iOS. Um, I don't know if it's an authorization or how you get that made for iOS MFI stamp on your stuff. And Google, I think this week, just announced Google Now integration with the Nest thermostat. So I think I, I I think this whole consensus thing that you're talking about, I think it is it is the next step, but I think it's taking longer they had, had, than they had anticipated on. Mm-hmm. So if I so we so we don't know from the notes, but we can go back and listen. Did I say it would happen in 2014, or did I say yeah. it won't happen in 2014? I think, or you, it need, I, I think you said it I needs think you said it happen. needed to be. It, okay. it needed to happen for this to happen in 2014. So I, so I didn't actually predict anything. I just pointed out a truth. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. All right. Um, let's see. We also have, uh, I apparently said the personal cloud will increase. I mean, there's more than just Fitbit these days, right? So I, 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 I guess that's, I mean, nothing really earth shattering. Everybody had a watch. Android got has a watch. Apple announced one. Pretty much what you expect, you know. I don't think again, even those I don't think were terribly, terribly groundbreaking. Um, Android was the watch was just like a better version of Google Glass in the long run. But I feel like if if the one thing that Android's done well, it's iterate Mm -hmm. on their existing platform, right? Without requiring a bunch of people to go out and buy new devices. I mean, you look at where the Nexus Seven started prior to Kit Bless bless you. Bless you. Twice. Thank you. Um, and now <laughs> being on um, Lollipop. <laughs> and you look at the Chromecast and how many updates it's gotten. I think the Google devices yeah. have better longevity. Oh, yeah. Over time. You see more iteration mm-hmm. versus just a big wide swath of, inter- of, of, of updates you get with Apple. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like, well, this year you're going to get this list of features. And they're like, well, we got that in point six version of whatever you mm-hmm. know um like the, the, it just kind of slithers out you know I, I, and we've talked about that before kind of the philosophies between apple and google um and how they roll things out certainly mm-hmm. so okay <laughs> hi rim sells last iteration of the blackberry before selling off ip to someone else that's your first one you had several 
Right. Well, well, do you want to take them point by point? Sure. Let's go point by point. What do you think about that one? It didn't well, happen for the most part. Let's let's be honest. I mean, they came. What, what's that? What's that piece of crap square phone that they came out with? <laughs> yeah, passport. Okay. Oh, yeah. So, so they came out with that, and you're thinking, okay, they're dead in the water. Then, well, just last week, they reached a huge deal with Ford, where Ford is getting rid of uh, Microsoft as the supplier of the technology for their right. seats. Uh, Are you serious? And, and, yes. Mm-hmm. So yes. So. Good, good for black. Well, but but, but, for- but QNX is in a lot of cars, and yes. QNX it's not like it's a BlackBerry stuck right. on your dashboard. Mm-hmm. It's actually it, it, probably it's Linux a based. Linux based. Uh, so I mean, and it, it, it's actually pretty well done from what I understand. Mm-hmm. Sorry, Jim. No, that's okay. I just I just think that uh, um, I thought that they were dead in the water, and at least they're they're finding a way to hold on. I mean, clearly they're never going to regain any share of the smartphone market. But you know, if that's if that's going to be their end to remain relevant, then you know, good for them. Yeah. Well, Same. they're they're working closely with Samsung. Samsung and them, I think, are going to share some inner and in, intellectual property or mm. or something along those lines. And I don't know if this is. I think Black this Berry is classic. the classic. Is that yeah. has that been announced? Yeah. Okay. I don't, I don't yeah. know if it's official, but they're they're coming out with another new BlackBerry that's a lot closer to the blackberries when they were successful huh. like the curve i think it is mm-hmm. um and it's uh, it's a lot more similar in design which which if you look and that's the one thing i'm surprised that if if anyone hadn't done it, it would be someone on the android platform creating a similar look and feel um there was that one keyboard device for ios or for the iphone that looked a lot like oh the typo the typo <laughs> That, that was the one that Ryan Seacrest backed. Yeah, but that then, yeah. <laughs> he sucks. <laughs> but it, that's the one thing I'm surprised that we haven't seen. If you want to put that final nail in the BlackBerry coffin, if you can mm-hmm. give that same keyboard type interface. The right. other thing that, that, that BlackBerry has been really good about with the keyboard is this perfectly square screen because everyone likes to take everything and make it look like Instagram. I mean, if you look at the screen on <laughs> Everything it's the original Instagram. <laughs> it's, it's, it's everything's very square, mm-hmm. but and, and they but they tried to leave that, and it, it definitely didn't work for them. I don't know. Well, you know. Hey, a lot of people don't like that change, and I, I see bringing back one of the other ones. You know, I, I think I'm surprised keyboards. Like I, I, I get the I get all the Android phones going towards the iPhone look. It's mm-hmm. a cool thing, but I'm surprised we still don't still have some keyboard Androids out there. Some. There was there was but, one. Yeah, but I, I'm surprised LG that, that just was. died off. Because mm-hmm. the biggest thing everybody picked the Android for was I want a keyboard. Mm-hmm. Like for the longest time, that was the single thing I heard. Um, but now look at it. But. All right, uh, 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 number two, Jim. And this is actually interesting when I heard this one. Pittsburgh gets its first smart parking system, uh, including road sensors to alert drivers to open spots on streets. Um, I don't know. If, are you familiar with uh, Ginny's post on uh, that stretch? Yes. His interaction yes. with Saludo. Uh, you want to fill him in on what's happening there? I, I don't think we've talked about this on the show yet. Well, I mean, so so you know, I've always been. Uh, I, I you know, I reported for years on parking in Pittsburgh and simultaneously did everything I could to not pay the Pittsburgh Parking Authority. Um, <laughs> and, and, and this is a true story until until they installed the new enter your license plate systems, and they were still using meters mm-hmm. for three years. Three years. Uh, I and probably about three or four colleagues at KDK, we played parking spot roulette every day where we would we knew a couple spots in Pittsburgh that were never monitored or at least on an irregular basis. So in a matter of three years, I probably got about a dozen parking tickets. I was booted once. I was towed. But <laughs> no, no, hold on, hold on. You laugh. But it only cost me about $900 over three years to park in downtown Pittsburgh. Oh wow! Oh, nice. So yes. So <laughs> all of a sudden, yeah. everyone's like, "Whoa!" Yeah, right, right. Yeah. <laughs> Over three years. Well, you have to do the math on that one. You're thinking like, "Okay, how 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 much well, is the lease for I, a month?" KDK made us pay two hundred and fifty dollars a month to park in the building. Wow! I think we pay like eighty five in Mount Lebanon. Yeah. For for my wife's work. So that's so that's um anyway, uh yeah, so 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 rather than and in Boston that they are rolling out a smart parking system. Now there was an mm-hmm. app called Haystack that was that was rolled out in Boston. It died a very quick death. In fact, I think they just pulled it from the from the from the app store. Ooh. And the, the gist of Haystack was 
you know, you park on the street. Let's say you put you it's know, been, $4 in a meter. It's been banned in Boston, according to this headline. Yes, yes, it has. Uh, and that's why they, they decided to pull the app altogether. <laughs> but you would pay, let's say you, you had a parking spot. You can go on Haystack and say, hey, I'm going to leave this parking spot at 3 o'clock. And oh. it's yours for, you know, $5. And this was independent. So, oh. I, this was independent, right? Like, this was like you yes, were reselling it was, it was, your spot. Right. I, was, I remember the controversy, yeah. Private way to make money off public space. Um, Jim, so, you're, a, you're a genius. I was just doing the math, and if you figure 52 weeks times five days a week parking, yeah, it's yeah. 260 times three years is 780. So yeah. $900 divided by 780 is a dollar fifteen. Per day. Per day. Per day. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. You can't I take mean, the tea for that much. Um, <laughs> <laughs> the tea's $5 round trip. Yeah. I mean, the reality is, uh, you know, the, the thing about parking in Pittsburgh is that um, it's still it's still more than what it should be. And, and, and it was recently determined that they would uh, step up the, the enforcement hours, which is not good for business. And, and, and in Boston, they stop enforcing meters at 8 o'clock. Mm-hmm. Um, and you know, Boston is not a city that stays open very late, but there are still a lot of things you can do in Boston after eight o'clock and park for free. And I know going into downtown Pittsburgh, you know, I'll, I'll put money in a meter or I'll, I'll, I'll circle until six o'clock and jump on a meter spot because that's what I do. When I go to pirate games, when I'm home, I will go downtown at six o'clock, leave my car at a parking spot with a meter and that's free parking. You know, I take the T over and the T back. It's free parking. So they've decided in Pittsburgh, they're going to take a more analytical uh, an analytical um, stance towards parking, mm-hmm. and they're going to try to do variable pricing. So if, if it's more using the laws of supply and demand. So if there's not really much of a demand, if they know that people aren't going to be parking in, in a certain area after 8 o'clock, they're not going to enforce it. But maybe on a weekend or maybe you know when it's light-up night or something like that, they're going to enforce parking later. Um, so it's sort of on a sliding scale. I, I, you know, I'm wary about it. I think that the mayor in Ginny's post on, on her blog made, made some very compelling points. But, you know, let's be honest. I mean, we're still, you know, we're all from the area and, you know, we all spent substantial time in the area. And, you know, we're talking about something that's not a sure thing anymore. Mm -hmm. Now, to the mayor's credit, they've decided not to do this in uh, parking garages. No, parking garages are going to hold hold the line at whatever they are, or at least they're going to remain a flat rate, a flat constant rate. Um, But, you know, it's 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 I think, you know, I don't think when you change the system. So substantially, which is what they're trying to do, it does a service to businesses downtown. Yeah. Uh, I think that, you know, that's exactly what you don't want to do is make it harder, make people, okay, where, can I park here? Can I not park here? So I think, and, and the big problem is with the Pittsburgh Parking Authority is it is a, uh, you know, it's not necessarily part of the city. And what's even worse is the Pittsburgh Parking Authority, uh, they, they, when they hand out, when those idiot those idiot parking enforcement officers and those are some of the those are, i mean seriously those are some of the, the most inept non-friendly jackasses i mean I, I i the number of times that i've been downtown i've gotten tickets for parking when i clearly had time left on the meter but you know because the 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 the, the, the level of which you need to have an education to do it is somewhere around fourth grade <laughs> I, I mean, let's be honest. That's why people don't go down in, in downtown areas anymore, right? Because it's it's so hard to park, and it's such a challenge. So I think it's they're not doing a, a, a great service to the businesses when you change the system like that. Mm-hmm. Um, now in Boston, they are doing they are in the process of rolling out a new system. There's an area called the Seaport, uh, which they've kind of also dubbed the Innovation District. It's exploded in terms of growth, and parking is very very limited. And now there's going to be an app where you can see. Um, there are sensors embedded in the pavement where you can see where there's going to be on-street parking. So that's pretty cool. Awesome. I, I want to point out, your your video looks 10 times better on that iPad than whatever you are using before. I was using my MacBook. That's, I, I'm, that's I'm amazing. glad to hear that. But I think... Uh, I think my prediction for 2015 is that I'm going to buy a new MacBook now. <laughs> <laughs> so, I think I'm going to write that one down. Awesome. Awesome. So that's all the, one, the predictions we have from last year. Let's get into 2015. Chilla, are you officially, I have I have down your thing about Internet of Things standards will come together? So I, th- I think there will be an Internet of Things, and I think everyone's going to, every company's going to go kind of in their own direction. You're going to have your Apple and your Google and your Amazon and whatnot. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. I noticed. So, I mean, when, I, I, at, least so, there, at least there would be that standardization. At least, hopefully, you're like, I can buy the Apple thing. Like, well, like you and I don't even think it's going to be. You're going to have to buy the Apple thing. I think you're going to see 
everyone come out with a standard and then all these companies like um, Belkin and I'm trying to come up with companies off the top of my head. Like, like Belkin, Belkin makes the Wemo. Oh, oh okay. Um, and uh, Logitech. Mm-hmm. I, Logitech makes the Harmony device, which integrates cross-platform. Um, I think you're going to see everybody publish their standard. Companies are going to take their device, adhere it to the standard, um, and you'll be able to use it cross-platform. Pl- Almost like an if-this-then-that kind of thing okay. to link everything together. The, the, the key to this is... Um, the if this then that is going to be some kind of home hub, and I think that home hub is what Google could use the Nest for because it's always at your house. Apple TV could use or Apple could use the Apple TV. And the interesting thing I saw on the the Fire Stick that you had was that the you get more use out of the Fire Stick <laughs> <laughs> if, if you have. <laughs> If you if you have the, the Kindle HDX, so if Kindle uses the Fire Stick as their home hub mm-hmm. to use it to then talk so to all thing, the other devices. And, you're, and I'm looking at the back of it. It says dual core, and I'm looking at the mm-hmm. games that apparently can play on it. And I'm like, okay, I already downloaded. You don't know Jack. I can't wait to try that out. <laughs> you know, but uh, yeah. It, so so this little stick just becomes like the hub of your home, like your Xbox has for you a little bit, right? right? So I, I think you're going to see different companies pick what their hub. It obviously has to be. It can't be your phone because you it need has a to starting. Be, point. You need something that's, but yeah. you need something that's always going to be there. Yeah. So if you want to control your thermostat and something has to talk to your thermostat, okay. I think that's where there's going to be some kind of central device that then you talk to and then it communicates around your house. Interesting. So Interesting. that that's my my theory okay okay awesome. uh, jim i know you have a heart out here at eight o'clock so uh, I, w- I definitely want to get yours in um well first of all uh i, I got this in the mail today um <laughs> did you guys see the cards against humanity with the, what they sent out thirty thousand boxes of uh i think those are the, the things that mad like were showing me before the last podcast yes oh. no what they sent <laughs> no. out Wait, no, I think, this, I think. this is black friday oh, is this something different oh can no no it? this is a black can friday I, thing can i show it oh yes <laughs> So and, and you know what's inside? Huh. Actual. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> like you smell it? Like it is for real? Okay, for it those who don't know, he, he showed expletive here. Um he showed up, it's a black box. They said they were shell- selling bullshit. Yeah. On and, Black and Friday. They, they totally were. And <laughs> <laughs> So 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 you're the one you're the one that looked at it as like you just wanted to put your money down to see if they would really do it, right? Yeah. Yeah, and, and because they, they took whatever profit they made, because apparently it costs like five dollars and eighty cents to package it and ship it, and so in the end, whatever money they made, a couple thousand bucks, they donated it to Heifer.org, which is actually a really great organization mm-hmm. um, where they donate they donate heifers to to, uh, to to people in need, where they can use it to uh, produce milk and and uh, to other other agriculture related uh, endeavors. With um, in terms of my, you know, I'm gonna go, I'm, I'm gonna do one, and I think it's um. It sort of bridges the gap between technology and what, what my period expertise was, and it has to do with Uber. And I think you know this is the year. Twenty fifteen is going to be the year where you're going to see really cities. I mean, really cities are really going to start cracking down on what what at first was you know a very simple concept. Uh, you know, Uber as an app has been valued at you know, seventeen billion dollars. Um, it, it, it started as you know just a ride sharing thing that's become really a big enterprise, but but you know there's it's gotten some bad press. Uh, you saw what happened in Australia during the hostage situation where their surge pricing kicked in and they were charging people hundreds of dollars to get from point A to point B. Um, so I think that uh, I think if if you want to add if you want to summarize it in one line, I think um, I think uh, between Uber, Lyft, and Sidecar, you're going to see one of those services go away because of the increased amount of uh, regulation that, uh, that, that that towns and cities are are embarking upon, mm-hmm. and, and then they're, they're giving such a bad name to their service too. Yeah, on top and, of and I think on, on on the surface, and Kim Lyons at the Post Gazette has really done a great job of of covering you know the, the, at least from, from the Pittsburgh aspect of of, of Uber and Lyft. Um, I think uh, I use it quite a bit up here. You know, I have a car, mm-hmm. uh, but sometimes for me, it's it's easier. If I'm going to go into the city, you know, parking in Boston is so prohibitively expensive. Yeah. Uh, and, and where I live, the train literally runs down the street, but it's not 
you know, it's not necessarily predictable, although literally they just started, um, which I think they're going to start doing it on the T in Pittsburgh because it's a similar light rail type system. Mm -hmm. So uh, I can track, track the trains, you know, going through my neighborhood. Um, And And I I think they're doing, they're doing something like with the buses, I think in general. Yeah. Which uh, they do here. up here. All every bus is GPS tracking, which is brilliant. And I got to tell you guys, when that rolls out, um, there's an app called Transit, which already is in is in use, and you can use it in Pittsburgh, I believe. Mm-hmm. I but so. but the app is just called Transit, and it is a brilliant piece of engineering. Because and I'm I'm, I'm just going to see see if I can. So so on one screen, it tells me every bus nearby, how many minutes until oh. it comes up. Wow. There's the green line, which is the train nearby. It even tells me how close the nearest Uber is, go figure. Um, but I believe it works in Pittsburgh, and I was in Washington, D.C., and it works down there as well. So it's brilliant. I highly recommend it. It's a free app, Transit. I think it's still free. Yet. Or at least they were charging you a dollar for a, for a year's license. But nonetheless, um, yeah, I think I think the problem is, is that it's a great concept, but you have a few rogue individuals. You know, there's been some sexual assaults here perpetrated by ride-sharing uh, drivers in Boston. There's been the issue of the surge pricing, which, you know, I think is almost automated. You know, there's nobody who says, I don't think there's anybody who hits the button and says, oh, here's where we can cash in. <laughs> I think it's just all <laughs> supply and demand. And, but um, it's a great concept. But I think the problem is, is that uh, uh, there, there are certainly some regulations that it skirts. And at some point, they're going to have to uh, they're gonna have to figure out a way. Although I will say the cab situation in Pittsburgh is just is awful. So mm-hmm. um, that's true about that. But the other Uber problem is that they are run by, um, so we showed bullshit, my love to say assholes. So I'm sure, thinking. sure. They just seem like it's the enough worst in the show. It's after dark. of entrepreneurial people. <laughs> the awesome cast. Yeah. <laughs> it's the it's the They're just show. so evil. I mean, mm-hmm. good Lord. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, and, and there's been a lot of discussion about what is this? Is this a small company, company culture that, that doesn't translate well into uh, being big? You know, and we've seen that you know, a lot over the years with, with all kinds of companies, but especially yeah. something like this kind of public facing, um, you know, having to deal with governments, local governments all over the world at this point. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and then just and then they're just well, doing point, stupid they're, stuff. They're banned in a couple of countries. Uber yeah, is yeah. where I don't think other services are. Yeah. 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 But but. but uh, but I will say sidecar, um, uh, so Lyft is up here. Lyft isn't necessarily as, as prevalent. I've used Lyft in Pittsburgh, um, actually, and i got to tell you, for me to get from downtown Pittsburgh to East McKeesport for $25 is, is amazing. But um, uh, sidecar, which had been around, I believe, sidecar had been one of, the, one of the first, and they sort of, I don't know what happened. I think Uber and Lyft just got so big. Now, sidecar is trying to make another push into Boston, and the, the, what's unique about sidecar is – if you're a sidecar driver, let's say, you know, you put your address in where you're going, it'll pull up a list of, you know, two or three or four drivers nearby and each of them almost bid on oh, wow. how long it'll take for them to get there and how much it'll cost you. So it's an interesting concept, but I think, you know, you know, I think in the grand scheme of things, and it translates to so many, you know, think about Twitter. Twitter is such a simple concept. And it exploded in popularity. And then uh, at what app.net, people thought that was going to be possibly a viable competitor. You know, it never took off. Um, you know, Facebook is what it is. Um, uh, well, I can't even – oh, well, I can't even think – what's it, – it, why can't I think of the uh, competitor? <laughs> MySpace? Remember, remember Plurk? No, 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 what's the one that came out the, the, the fairly recently? Oh, uh, Ello? Oh. Ello. I, I couldn't even think about it. I mean, it's a simple concept, but the problem is, you know, Uber and, and, and Lyft have critical mass, and it's going to be tough to find a competitor to knock them off or at least be a player because you kind of associate ride sharing with those apps. You associate social media with Facebook and Twitter. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think that's the problem is, yeah, you know, they're, they're small companies that made a name for themselves and they become synonymous. So, um, you know, it's a great concept, but it's just, it's, again, like you said, Mike, I think you said it best is they just get so big so quickly. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So, so, um, but in some yeah. places it's been helpful for, uh, I think they were talking about San Francisco, but of course, San Francisco is so forward progress to begin with. Uh, some of the cab companies have stepped up and put better technology in. So mm-hmm. versus just kind of fighting it to keep their own yeah. ways. So, but we see this with television. Now we see the X one system for that. And I think it's kind of maybe a, a fairly equivalent thing. So, and, and, and let me say one more thing uh, about you know, just about television in general, and I'll, I'll use this as a jumping board to maybe another prediction for something in my purview, which is really, you know, every year, you know, you look at the you look at media and you think that there's going to be some kind of you know game changing moment, and I think the reality is 
is that uh, I don't think we're going to see any major seismic changes in the TV business other than the streaming services that are, that are going to start taking off. So mm-hmm. I think that, you know, you're certainly going to see um, more of these companies, you know, a la carte cable is, is dead in the water. It's never, I don't think it's ever really going to happen no. uh, where you pick the channels you want. But I think what we're going to see, and which is going to appeal to cord cutters, is you're going to see a lot more of these networks out there that are going to offer the services on an a la carte basis uh, if they can, you know, there's obviously language and cable contracts, uh, you know, for HGTV, Comedy Central, things like that. But, um, you know, I think if anything, we're going to see a lot more streaming options uh, right from the source, not necessarily from, you know, from Hulu or Net- Netflix. But you're going to see a lot of these companies, you know, think that they can go it go it on their own. And I think in some cases it's going to be successful. Um, I don't necessarily know if, you know, there's going to be a hunger for people to, you know, pay eight dollars a month to watch Lifetime. Unless you want to see <laughs> Meredith Baxter Bernie in some uh, made-for-TV movie, but um, yeah, doesn't? I think we're going to see more, more streaming options. Everybody loves Meredith Baxter Bernie. That's just a fact of life. <laughs> 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 awesome. By the way, Bobby F J Town says hi in the chat room. Jim Loke. Uh, oh, you know what? Oh, I I couldn't get in the chat room because I had it on my laptop, which oh. uh, sucks. <laughs> Awesome. I know you said you had to get out of here about eight o'clock. So uh... I do, gentlemen. I, gentlemen and ladies, I appreciate it very much. Um, I hope to uh, eventually run into all of you very soon. I'm going to be uh, back in the Pittsburgh area for a little while over the holidays. And, um, Excellent. Uh, Twenty. I, I will. I, and for Jim Loke, 2015 is going to be an interesting year. I'll, 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 I'll sum, sum, sum it at that. Oh. Um, <laughs> oh. Teaser. Yeah. Mm. That means he's starting a podcast. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Ladies and gentlemen, the the Jim Loke show. Yeah. That's too All good. Right, He's starting his own cable network. Oh, there you go. <laughs> it's it's going to be there Jay. It it's going to be like the o- Oprah oh. team. Oh, <laughs> I like that. I like that. Thanks, Jim. Anything you want to plug? Where can people find you on the online, on the TVs, wherever? At Loke. And uh, by the way, I, I, I will now be uh, one of these several jerks uh, in, in the Boston. If you're in the Boston area, I'll be one of the jerks driving a Prius around now. So uh, that, that'll be that'll be entertaining. <laughs> nice. Um, so, there. oh, hey, real quick, actually, real quick, Mike, one thing that popped into my mind, I, I'm sorry, I know I'm, I'm stretching, you know, I, I'm stretching your time now. Uh, one thing that was mentioned that was that was promoted heavily this year that I've learned in the last couple of days is not anywhere near reaching uh, reaching the market is Apple CarPlay. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, they were at, Apple was really adamant that you were going to see this in 2014 models. And there's an entire list of on the website of uh of different manufacturers are supposed to offer this this iOS type interface in cars, and nobody has plans to integrate it anytime soon. Yeah, we I have QNX with uh, we have the Q, we have the QNX announcement now. Yeah, you know? when what I haven't seen many things about the Google was supposed to do the same thing. Mm-hmm. They had theirs with the automobile. Alliance, we had some. We had, or... we had some 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 installables. I've yeah. seen, but yeah. nothing. Yeah, I haven't seen much in that. So, so if you want if you want a prediction in that vein, I don't think I don't think Apple CarPlay is going to reach the market in 2015. Oh wow, at least not not in a broad strokes because you can get no. it. You can get it. It's just not an installable thing. We had Microsoft Sync in our 2011 uh, uh, Escape that we just picked up, but it's not the cool screen one or anything like that. Yeah, um, but, but you know, I, my uh, I, I know people. In fact, that's the I think every TV station in America. As a fleet of Ford Escapes to get around from point A to point B, <laughs> um, it's just how it goes, and it's it's a convenient vehicle for that. But yeah, the the, I, the sync is a great it's a great inter- I mean, that was sort of what started it all. Um, I, th- I I I think, it, but uh, yeah, I, I, I was really hoping to find some CarPlay out there on the market just because. But um, oh well, it is what it is. Awesome. Thanks a lot, Jim Loke. Thanks, go guys. Check him out. Merry Christmas. All right. Merry Christmas. Let's uh, go around with our predictions. Keep going here. Uh, and we'll get out of the way for the video game guys here coming up probably within the half hour. I think I see them showing up in the chat room. Cindy, what do you got for 2015? What is, what, what's in your crystal ball or your magic eight ball? Well, the thing, I don't know if it's, uh, I guess it's a predict. I'm going to do a non-prediction again, oh, I no. suppose. But what I'm most interested to see is, um, and this is related to what, what Jim was just talking about, um, the streaming and things on, um, for, for um, the non-television streaming on televisions um, and also other devices in the home. And I think that this is going to be really big in this next year. And the reason it will be big is, I mean, it's it's something that we've had the functionality of, but the interface to it has always been 
too clunky for your average human. And so what I think we'll see is things like um, the uh, X1, I guess is what it's called, at, that um, Xfinity is offering, and then other cable companies are going to offer these other services. Like TiVo, I believe, has a way to do all of this where you can search and right. you can see is this thing not only on the cable things, but, but is it on Amazon uh, Prime? Is it on my iTunes? Is it anywhere else? Can I buy it? So you can you'll be able to search more easily, and and the thing that's going to pull it along is that families will get this, and t it'll tend to be sort of the geeky people and the kids who will figure out how to use it. But once a few people see what other people have, it will I think it'll roll out faster than than you might expect a, a technology like that. Awesome, awesome. So so basically interface, yeah, because it, 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 Chromecast is nice. But it seems like you do need to have that extra connection in your head, right? That, well, and you have to think about, no, is this thing, is that on Netflix? Yeah, yeah, is yeah, it yeah. on? Well, did I where put do my I right input on my TV, you know? Right, um, right. You want, the, you want the interface to just say it's in this place, and then can you just show it to me now? Yeah. And I think you'll start to see that this year, and I think it's going to be a big difference. I think people will start to watch YouTube mm -hmm. um, because they'll be used to doing that kind of thing. So kind of counterintuitively, they'll right. think that they're right. going to be buying all these movies and stuff, but they'll be watching more content of it. Of so they'll be exposed sorts. to that kind of thing on YouTube and, and maybe stuff like this, you know, or, 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 or but way better be, things. Like the family will watch the YouTube <laughs> right. on TV while they're eating dinner. Right, right. Exactly. Awesome. Let's go to the couch. Who wants to go first? Who's got a prediction? I went. I do. I have two. Sorg. Okay, Ooh. DJ Launchbox, what do you I have, got? I have one that is a bit more outlandish and one that I think is a safer prediction. Okay. Which one do you want first? Uh, give me the safe one first. Safe one. Okay. I think 2015 will be the year that Apple finally produces a full-blown television set. Oh. It will integrate with their Apple TV platform that they already have. And um, th I think the reason... I think the reason uh, <laughs> Sorry, for the, he, delay. the headphones I gave him have a big delay, so it's kind of driving him insane. Just, tonight. I'm just hearing myself <laughs> twice in my own head. <laughs> sorry, sorry, three times if you count the original from the mouth. Um, uh, I think the reason for the delay and the reason why they haven't moved on this yet is because they're waiting for 4K television to become uh, widely accepted uh, in the culture. Okay, um, in the same way that HDTV has. Um, so once 4K TV takes There's no off, content. There's right. just no content right now. There is some. A and lot of people are moving in that direction. But from but there, also... There, there's no content... Oh, let me clarify that. There's no content in the way that there was only that channel you had on your direct TV that just showed sunsets for 24 hours. Yep. And that was your HD channel. <laughs> yes. We had a whole channel called HDNet that got all the movies in HD and some MMA. And mm -hmm. because they're the only ones that did right. on the top tier of your of your, of your your satellite package. Not even cable yet. Mm -hmm. So, go ahead. <laughs> so, uh, I, I think once 4K TVs start becoming more common, we're going to see Apple, Apple coming out with its own 4K with TV. the pinnacle of 4K TVs, right? right? Now, yeah. but... Uh, the thing is, from what I've heard, the next step after 4K is already so close on its heels that they're already converting movies to that next step. I can't remember what the number is. I, th I think it's 5K. I think it's 5K, yeah. yeah. Uh, they're already converting movies in anticipation of that. Okay. Um, so uh, that could uh, mean that I'm completely wrong. But I'm not an expert. <laughs> at least you I'm have just something around it. There's, at least there's not like, there's going to be an Apple TV because, mm -hmm. you know, like it's been for the last like two or three years. Yeah. Um, so I don't know. I, they have to do. So, like, I can't imagine the thing, and that's probably the point. We couldn't imagine what they could do with the watch. We're still not sure what they're doing with the watch, <laughs> um, but it's definitely not what you expected, right? Mm -hmm. um, and I think that's the same thing with TVs. What is going to be the thing yeah. with with a TV that changes things? Their their current Apple TV platform. I mean, they've ignored it for so long. Mm -hmm. There's been small little incremental updates. I had to help and, somebody update their Apple TV a couple weeks ago, and I'm just like, really? This is what's where it's at? You yeah, know? Like, yeah. Especially looking at our Fire Sticks and our Chromecast and our. And, now that being said, I love my Apple TV. I've got, and then, and I've got then one there's in my people dedicated mm -hmm. to it. It's great. It is. Uh, I I stream. I use that to stream. Mm -hmm. I also use my PS3 to stream. Mm -hmm. Um, and I use my um, uh uh uh, uh Paperwhite. No, yeah, Paperwhite. No. <laughs> um, I can't think of Chrome. My Chromecast. I have okay. a Chromecast in my kitchen that I stream stuff with. Yeah. And the Apple TV is consistently the mm -hmm. highest quality. Nice video. Nice. Um. So I, th I think that they're finally going to step in that direction. Cool, cool. Uh, as far as my 
outlandish prediction. So HBO Go is coming out next year, right? Mm-hmm. And then you've got um, Netflix and Hulu and uh, Amazon Prime. Those are the big ones, right? Right. One of those is going to go away. Mm. One of them is right. going to stop offering streaming content, and I'm pretty sure it's going to be Amazon Prime because it just pulls right out. It's got the same stuff streaming as all the other channels. Its interface is terrible on anything I've ever used it on. Um, they'll, it'll we'll see, still. We'll see how the stick is. Right. So yeah. It was a true. big upgrade from the Xbox. From the, from <laughs> there, the, it <laughs> there it is. <laughs> oh, there it is. <laughs> um, it is. It's a big step up from the Xbox interface. I'll tell you that much so far. It. Yeah. So. What, what do you think they'll do with their their personally created content? Think they'll uh, sell it off or just. I think they'll just let it go. Just away. let it go. I, I mean, feel it's like, not, it's feel not like, really making any waves. I feel like they have enough money that they'll just sink the money. It's like Microsoft, the Xbox. They just sunk and lost money until it became successful. Yeah. And I feel like Amazon's kind of in the same position with that. I think it's possible. So, if, but if but if you see not, them as the weakest link. I see them, yeah. I, uh, of okay. those large streamers, because obviously HBO Go is going to be huge. Mm-hmm. So um, I think if anyone goes away, it's going to be Amazon Prime. But I think we're going to have one less major streaming company at the end of 2015. I think it might be Netflix. Mm -hmm. Really? You think it'll be Netflix? You know what? You know, I I think I'm with her on that because Netflix has stumbled. They're making some really weird choices about the U.S. market versus like international markets. Mm -hmm. Like they won't make deals with people. It's weird. Mm -hmm. I think they're. I think they're screwing up. And they've done that. Remember, remember Quickster. Yeah. Yeah. Quickster. Like this is not an infallible company. Yeah. So, but it's a huge company. It, it is, but that doesn't mean well, Microsoft is a huge, huge Microsoft company. Microsoft also is huge. That's true. But Sorg, if Microsoft started hemorrhaging money today, they could lose money consistently and still be around next year. Mm-hmm. Look at WCW. Consider how long they lost we can't millions get of dollars. A podcast without a wrestling reference. Absolutely tonight. not. <laughs> uh, they lost how many millions of dollars? Just add a clip, just again and again and again. How but, much but money they were did they supported by the big Turner company up top. Exactly, so and they and they had versus... enough momentum that kept them going for a couple of years, even though mm-hmm. they were terrible and didn't make a dime. Mm-hmm. So, all right. Well, uh, what about you, Dutters? My predictions done, yeah. done, done. Yik yak, uh, yik yak will take over. W- uh, hmm. Hold on. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> uh, my first one is: I think there's going to be come an issue. With uh, ownership of user-generated content and wearables, I think that's going to be something that's going to pop up because I think buried in, I had this conversation with you the other night, uh, buried in a lot of wearable technology terms is that they own the content you create with these particular wearables and involving down to, like, I, for example, I said with Fitbit, with diets that you're putting out there and they own that right. content and they can use it however they want. Right, right. right. Um, so I think eventually it's going to come out that people are going to be like, hey, wait a minute. <laughs> do, they, do, they, do they consider... We talked about like if you posted like mm-hmm. in Fitbit, like you can mm-hmm. say, "Oh, I lost da 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 da." Like that's covered. Did they mm-hmm. say whether the actual stats were covered under that? Your stats are protected as long as they're aggregated and cannot be. As long dis- as they're an automatic kind of thing. As long as but they're as grouped as you- together. Okay. And not identifiable to a particular person. Okay. So as long they're an identifiable, wait, well, I forget how they they de-identify the information, so and they I- can't directly con- connect it to you. But they could say users 30 to 35, blah, blah, blah. Now you're aggregated. I can't attribute that specific, specifically to you. So now who owns that content? Uh, does Is it uh, Fitbit that owns that content? And is it your company? Maybe you're doing your health you know, wellness program with own that content. Uh, and then like I've, I've questioned the overall with Verizon and Sprint and your provider, what do they own in this whole thing? Because being the provider, what, what can they, where they fall in the third party kind of a deal. So that was my first one. It was going to be kind of a, a scuffle over the user generated content and wearables. And then the second one, of course it involves yik yak. Um, <laughs> I'm predicting that brands are going to realize um, yik yak, uh, like after school, any of the ones where it's completely anonymous they can sneak in their own branding without paying a dime. For example, uh, during finals week, if I would have posted something on Yik Yak saying, man, I could really go for a slice for pizza from Slice, suddenly kids are going, hey, you know what? I could go for a break. And and you pick anything close to campus, anything that uh, Starbucks could have done. And any brand could easily sneak it in because it's all completely, there's no identifiable, you know, there's no identifying character, nothing. We don't have usernames, anything. So brands could are missing, I think they haven't realized they're kind of missing the boat on this yet, where they could just kind of sneak in advertising for free. 
by posting on these sites and targeting uh, college kids and kids with you know, high school kids, you know, with supposedly disposable income. Does this kind of fall into the idea of how do I how do I do Snapchat? Because Snapchat is kind of an announcement. I guess there's attached to usernames, but mm -hmm. still that kind of broadcasting. And Gary Vaynerchuk is like, well, I'm trying to figure out how to brand on Snapchat. You know, you, you don't think about it right off the bat, but there's actually been some pretty good. Um, this uh, has been a year for Snapchat. This has been a big year for Snapchat and businesses figuring out mm -hmm. how to use Snapchat, actually. Mm -hmm. um, so you think this is kind of the next step of like kind of attacking the, the, the more anonymous size of things mm -hmm. you know, versus the like you know, Facebook. We have we have dark posts and we have very specific, specific um, check boxes you can click for that. Uh, now you so so do so you think like these more wide location-based anonymous things are, mm -hmm. are going to be very big for I this. mean what's what's stopping anything like for example I keep using Yik Yak as an example where you can they you can peek into different regions what's stopping a company like Starbucks mm -hmm. from peeking in and posting you know oh man I could really go for and, and even without uh but, but they need like a brand ambassador right because because Yik Yak you can't post if you're not in that area you're right. I mean, as long as you had somebody in that area. Right. Yeah, but, you, but if you have a Pizza Hut in that area, you say, hey, you know. Yeah, to all the managers. Make sure you yik yak, yeah. you know. And I don't know, maybe there'll be a Hootsuite, though, yik yak, yeah. you know, or something like you that. Know, you know that agency that claimed that they were behind the Alex from Target thing? Yeah. I think that this is the kind of thing that they were talking about doing, having, like, like they, I mean, Apparently they didn't really do the Alex from Target thing, but but so they said that they had brand ambassadors all over the world, and this would be the kind of thing, exactly what you're saying, mm -hmm, that they mm -hmm. just they've got plants, so uh, they pay people. There remember. there was a really good. Where did I see this? Oh, uh, social media day, Cindy. I think you were there for this. The the, the, the giant eagle people talked about how they encourage the the, the employees. I yeah. they have an ambassador from there, and they give them. Um, uh, 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 social media starters, they called it. I actually started employ trying to employ employees a little bit in one of my businesses um, for, for employees. Uh, but uh, like they, how each Giant Eagle location, and it's a grocery store if you're not uh, from the area, um, uh, you know, they're making sure that they, the people there are tweeting from that location, things specific to that location. Um, and, and that could be a similar thing. So, but again, it's a lot smaller organization i mean they're more a regional deal so mm -hmm. maybe i don't know i don't know if you could do that uh, a company wide like like a pizza hut would that get too do you end up with the domino situation mm -hmm. in the end when well, you start getting these where's the accountability on? i mean how exactly. can you prove that someone did their job exactly or, <laughs> or or who did the job when it turns into something else yeah. you know yeah. okay so there's no accountability on yet yeah because you have no, no idea mm -mm. you can't track that thing so unless yik yak i mean yik yak has we haven't figured out how yik yak's going to make his money it's, it's it's one of those weird app place so maybe they'll, they'll start advertising that mm -hmm. maybe they'll let pizza hut more broadly do that in a location where they're wherever their locations are uh on a map so. and then the next follow-up question with that is does does those word sponsored scare somebody you know the groups of kids to somewhere else because yep. now it's yep. not their private playground it's now, a, we're, now we're walking away i'm getting a little lower irked at twitter sponsored posts mm -hmm. promoted posts you know um even uh, facebook too is getting annoying uh, so you know, every, every uh, there's another advantage like is like like uh, uh, everything's great until brands and advertising ruins it. And what's so wrong with chronological order for uh, for everything <laughs> for like Facebook? Yeah. Oh yeah. And yeah, and I've noticed to go that, in and change mine yeah. every single time. And I've noticed that occasionally on Twitter with like different a couple different things I've seen appear out of order. Now yeah. I see that when people have like favorited things or retweeted yeah. things. Yeah. Uh, I haven't noticed it otherwise. Leave it in the order it was in. Should, it was fine where it was. It doesn't Why need to be here, there, and everywhere. <laughs> Why did you move my exactly. thing? Exactly. You know, there is a secret to Facebook to make sure you see stuff like as it should be without any. You algorithm. have to keep going in every no, time. No, 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 right? no, 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 oh. no, no. You Ooh. create everybody that you want. If you create like a family list and have everybody that's family here, I can take create everybody that's on Awesome Cast. Put it on a list. If you go to those lists. You see everything. Everything. Okay. If 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 you're like the the big the big thing is everybody's go went home for the holidays for Thanksgiving and they're like, did you see the baby pictures from blah blah blah? And it's like, no, I didn't. You know, just like we didn't see the the post from one of our really really good friends when it, when her grandmother died, because oh it was just in the news stream mm -hmm. and we weren't on Facebook at the time or we didn't see it because Facebook didn't think it was important enough to us. 
How are we supposed to? My brother announced that he was having a baby and Facebook didn't bother to tell me <laughs> because it did not think that was my important. Mom keep, my mom keeps saying, uh, I don't want to find out on Facebook. Yeah. <laughs> so, well, not you know what? To me. Maybe she wouldn't. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, Maybe it is a safe zone. Who knows, right? <laughs> Um, all right, my prediction. Everybody else went, right? Yes. Uh, my prediction, Microsoft is back. <laughs> we will continue to compare it to Apple and Google. I think we've already been doing that with the apps. I got in the Sway program. Sway. That was the, I don't even know Did how you? to describe it. I played with yeah. it a little bit. Um, it, 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 it's like a Storyfy mixed with a PowerPoint. PowerPoint. I, yeah. I think next time I do a presentation, I want to do a PowerPoint presentation in this thing. Yeah. But then I have to make sure the place has a really good internet connection. So I don't trust half the places you would present. I think they're going to make it where it works offline sooner or it has later. To. But it has to. Um, but yeah, yeah, especially I don't know if I want to depend on it with it in beta form. Um, but between that, there's going to be a big shift in the market, I think. I mean, they're already still kind of number one as far as they are everywhere. But I think public perception is the thing. We talk about Microsoft losing money, but they're, lo they're losing mind share in a big way and uh really 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 fumbled windows 8 the new the new ceo i think is making a lot of big changes that that you know are, are differentiating them we're seeing uh these apps pop up on android and ios which are pretty cool um and again very comparable and, and taking care of all that they're not, they're not hedging their bets on windows phone um well wait before you say that though so i, I had posted a link of something i saw earlier today <clears throat> which was it was a like a review of the top 20 websites every year since 1996. I don't okay. know if you had a chance to look okay. at it. Microsoft is currently number three and has never been below number four. Well, I think they're still on the downslide. I'm saying that this will be the shift in them moving back up. So I, I'm, predicting oh, I that, I'm predicting your prediction for 2016. <laughs> <laughs> Because I think I think it there's gonna be, I think there's gonna be like this cross-platform netbook war next year between like Chrome and Microsoft and all those companies that bring in these cheap laptop type devices. Mm -hmm. And I think the only one that's truly gonna make it out alive with with mass with and continued mass market share is um, is gonna be Microsoft. Mm -hmm. I think people are enamored with the the ipads and, and the ipads will have a place and the chromebooks will have a place but i think when it comes down to it you're going to see a resurgence in 2016 after everyone's dabbled in everything else they're going to be gonna like come back. Eh, microsoft wasn't that bad let's go back oh wow okay okay and, and and i think on top of that i think i think windows 10 is going to be their xp for this generation it's going to be the one that fixes everything brings it, it brings a more refined version of what they wanted to get out there with windows 8 and honestly i think windows 8 works i think it did the job and it's making those those hp envies and yoga notebooks and stuff uh they have something sexy out there to compare with an apple macbook mm -hmm. you know they they made that with uh, touch screens in mind mm -hmm. but they forgot how many machines were running non touch screens? Exactly. Oh, exactly. It's like, well, they have a two hundred dollar the HP Stream, mm -hmm. which has the worst monitor I've seen in ages, um, <laughs> and and it's not a touch screen. And 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 I don't recommend Windows eight for anybody without a touch screen. To be yep. honest, um, I, run, I run Windows eight on my touch screen laptop, and I'm still running seven on my. Uh, oh, I still love. Rig. I still love this stupid underpowered laptop over here with the touch screen. Yeah, it's I know great. I can't do more than two things with it at a time, but mm -hmm. it works fine. That's what Loke was on all night. You saw. How good that Whoa. looked you know it, it works fine and i love that i can just go and and touch things and make it work especially in a show environment I, I would love a touch screen to do wirecast that i'm doing here and I, we've talked about that like like I what do i need what are you are you guys okay over there what's happening her feet are so tiny <laughs> her feet are so big <laughs> i could fit her shoes inside my shoes Back. this is weird <laughs> okay all right that that's happening um but no i think i think it'll be interesting it'll be interesting year for that um, I mean, we always seen Chromebooks, big big numbers in uh, education. Education. Mm -hmm. I I, can't, I think they have that locked for a good long time. It's way better than an iPad. iPad has been just. Why would you pick an iPad at this point? Other yeah, the, other than you like Apple, the ecosystem. price is very prohibitive for mm -hmm. iPads. It is, especially with. But the it's the same thing for the Surface. I mean, if you want, it if, is. If if you mm -hmm. want a Surface, you're looking at like twenty three, twenty four hundred dollars to to get it 
to get it built out. Yeah. Right? To get yeah. like the i7 the, with a dock the, and a keyboard. Well, I think the, and... the Surface is comparable to a MacBook Air to me. That is their MacBook Air. But I don't have to buy the keyboard when I buy my MacBook Air. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 120 <laughs> bucks. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. I don't know. There, I just know a lot of families that rely on, I mean, the iPad is your portable babysitter. And, yeah. and oh, for whatever yeah, reason, yeah. they're not doing that with any other device. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, I think the App Store and the and their their ecosystem is what's keeping the iPad going. Yeah, yeah, totally. Um, th- there's definitely Apple families. Mm-hmm. Um, I I I'm seeing it in my own family. Like my 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 sister just hit my poor sister, has been on one of those track phone Android devices for a couple years now, <laughs> and she just texts me yesterday and says, "I got an iPhone," or "I got an Apple." I'm like, "Wait, what?" <laughs> it's like an iPhone five. Like the words were not in the right order. Mm-hmm. Um, but I was like, "Oh, okay, okay." Um, other that, she does not text me too often, so I thought it was my mom talking to me, which really confused me. I'm like, "How high did you get an Apple? You do AutoCAD." <laughs> it doesn't make any sense to me. <laughs> no sense. To me whatsoever um anyways she survives on gateways she's fine um anyway is this can still I, yeah yeah can i throw out one other tiny prediction i've been thinking about lately mm-hmm. um with cell phones becoming as popular as they are i think that the major cell phone companies are going to produce a high quality basic flip phone and they're going to put it out there back? i think i think we're going back because I have heard from a lot of people that they just want a simple flip phone. And when I say a lot of people, I mean like my grandmother wants a very basic flip phone. That's all she wants. But with family share plans being as popular as they are, it makes good sense to have a basic, simple, straightforward flip phone. Um, I, I cringe when like I've seen certain people that have like Samsung Androids or even Apple devices and have never installed one app, don't mm-hmm. even know how to do it. I was trying to help somebody that wanted to use Square on their phone, and they haven't even set up the Play Store. Yep. And this is somebody that's in a, uh, uh, he's got a couple letters by his name, you know, and, mm-hmm. and he's still yeah. like, that is the, you know, it should do everything. You know, yeah. I don't really need to do more. It's like, I got the phone because it's supposed to be the good one. He, mm-hmm. uh, the, the comment was, um, why doesn't this have this already? I paid so much for it. Exactly. And it was like, yeah. oh, that's not how it works. Yeah. <laughs> that's not yeah. how it works. You paid so much because it can have. Yeah, it. yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly. Versus a flip phone it had the store and the mm-hmm. music and everything and yeah. maybe Real Facebook simple, or straightforward. Clip it to the belt. There's a market out there for it. There is. I see a mm-hmm. few different people out there in in several professions that still have that flip phone. Mm-hmm. And I think. But you know what's gonna hurt? Mm-hmm. It's gonna hurt iPhone sales because everybody who was like, I need a smartphone. Oh, iPhones are easy to use. <laughs> <laughs> Mm-hmm. that's what's gonna mm-hmm. happen with that but but i think i think i think yeah and it's gonna be like okay do i do the flip phone or hey here's a computer for zero cents like a contract mm-hmm. you can get an iphone 5 for mm-hmm. nothing that's I'll ridiculous have, you'll have a bunch of hipsters who are like i just need my phone to be a phone flip <laughs> <laughs> no forget that bring me back you know how about bring me back the matrix slide phone when what do you oh, think yeah. like do you think the flip phone's gonna have like a high quality screen with a subset of apps i don't think so i think that if would they be just don't bother the purpose it'll be yeah. just like just a really good a build phone? it's gonna be a phone it'll it maybe <laughs> it'll have like a people like, are gonna talk on their phone led, LED screen out. like back in the day well why don't you just compromise and go with an lg chocolate let's let's reissue the lg chocolate oh, that's, that's, yeah. that's think, a good solid and man i'll be honest with you i don't think it's gonna hurt the iphone i think it's gonna hurt the android and yep. the Windows phones. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Because the whole reason people are like, well, I want a smartphone, but I want the cheapest one that I can get. Mm-hmm. And if there's if there's an influx of, I just need a phone, I don't think it's going to put a large dent in the Apple market. I right. think it's going to hurt the already hurting Boom. Samsung. Oh, yeah, LG chocolate, baby. Mm-hmm. I think it's going to hurt the already hurting Samsung market. I agree. Because my grandma doesn't have an iPhone because it's easy. She has an Android device that she doesn't use cheap. because it's too complicated. <laughs> She's like, well, I don't know how to turn it on, really. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, my mom showed you. And she's like, yeah, that's true. But I don't, still don't know how to turn it on. <laughs> I've got we had, a house we had phone. a similar problem. Fine. Actually, we had a similar problem. It was a feature phone that had a little bit of touch to it. Mm-hmm. And it, was just, it was just too much. Yep. It was already. I think it had a slide out <laughs> T9 and everything. So... All right, guys. Um, on that point, oh, they're put. 
They're bringing up Fraser Godzilla in the chat room, oh, so God. it's definitely oh, time God. to move on to the video game podcast. We heard that. I love the Fraser Godzilla. I heard that like five times last it night, and I loved me. it. I loved it every time. I couldn't breathe. I was laughing so hard. <laughs> it's just up. the Fraser theme with Godzilla <laughs> screaming. <laughs> And it's the greatest thing on the internet right died. now. Um, so with that, thank you, everybody. Uh, uh, the great end of the year. A great year for Awesome Cast. Um, a great year for pizza. Uh, a great <laughs> year for technology. And uh, it's been fun. I'm glad everybody has joined us this year uh, on the show uh, to impart our wisdom. And, and representing Pittsburgh. Uh, sort of with Jim Loke. But mostly representing Pittsburgh. We talked to a lot of great people uh, with Alpha Lab, with other startups, and already um, I think we're going to have some really, uh, we're going to have some fun here in uh, 2015 as well. Um, already some things. I might be I might be bringing some stuff back from vacation, guys. I am going to San Francisco at least twice, I think, um, and some other places. So I'll have some stories to bring back. Um, to steal a child. <laughs> <laughs> If you're making it out to one infinite loop, let me know. I want some product. I kind of want to. I'm like, well, let's go. If you there. if you go to the store down there, I need. I um, want, I'll send you with some cash. Right now, I give you a shopping I'm, list. I'm <laughs> in contact and scheduling to visit the Twit Studios up in Petaluma. Nice. nice. I will finally correct Leo Laporte personally that it is PodCamp, not WordCamp. Yeah, yeah, WordPress Camp. Well, what? WordPress Camp. He's like. Alex Lindsay was on there, and he finally corrected him, thankfully. Mm-hmm. But it just drives me nuts every time. Um, I corrected, well, he brought it up I, I corrected him from the PodCamp account. <laughs> 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 Um, but anyways, uh, and also uh, our friends from Verizon that, that uh, uh, showed us about the Innovation Center uh, a couple months ago at the Pittsburgh Tech Shop, uh, they said, anytime you're in F- San Francisco or Boston, um, stop. Uh, let us know and you can stop by. And uh, I'm going to stop by and I can't wait to see what kind of gadgets they're making down there. So who's coming in? Is that Riz? That's Riz, Riz. Is that the Riz? Riz, there's room for you on the oh, couch. Get man. in there. <laughs> Just in time yeah, for us in. to end this. Yeah. Guys, check out uh, check out Big big, uh, big Boss Battle. Yeah, Boss Battle over at InsertCoinToBegin.com. And if you're not of the faint of heart, check out Wrestling Mayhem Show this week, 450. <laughs> it's going to be a lot of fun as well. Thank you, Cynthia Klosky. Plug things. I uh, um I don't want to plug anything. Oh, oh Pittsburgh oh. bloggers! I did want to plug yes. Pittsburgh bloggers. Um, we are bringing Pittsburgh bloggers blog fest back in 2015, and we're uh, reinventing our online blog directory fest. and reconnecting our community. Nice. So if you want to know more, go to pghbloggers.org and um, sign up to receive emails, and you'll know all about it. Oh, is the old database in there? Is the old database in there? Because I'm sure I have some very very old entries in there. <laughs> I, I well come and I guess I don't know which one you're talking about, but I guess there's I bet there's I bet you have more than one listing. I'm sure I'm I sure do. That you do. I'm sure I do. Well, I'll, I'll get in and try to clean it up a little bit on my side. Um, actually, I'm glad to see that. You, you look like you had a pretty good uh, gathering there. I'm not. I can't remember if I put your video up to be honest. And I don't think I'm getting more out before the before the holiday here, unfortunately. I haven't seen it yet uh, so. for that particular one, but we'll post it eventually. Yes, it will be. Uh, all the rest of those podcast videos will go up after the holiday uh, sometime in January. Uh, uh, work pending, apparently. Uh, so, excellent. Go check that out. PGHbloggers.org. Uh, couch! Ah! <laughs> he was the first one panelriot.com awesome podcast I was having a conversation with you in the car on my way home from last week's show oh yeah yes there's so many things I wanted to tell you and fill you in on and and correct and tell you you're so right and and everything all across the board and Thank I can't remember much. any of them right now <laughs> Uh, yes, I do. I do do the wonderful uh, Panel Riot podcast. You can follow us on Twitter at Panel Riot. Follow me at DJ Lunchbox, and follow our intern, Intern Stan, the sassy mm-hmm. little creature who real. loves Petri the best. wine. He is real. He's I'm a, telling the, uh, you. Well, the dog is going nuts. Bobby all night. Dog is pissed. Um, um, and, uh, so he doesn't uh, like Intern Stan either. <laughs> the whole thing's at PanelRiot.com, and um, it's actually delayed this week because I'm doing this. But uh, we're in the we're in the midst. We're in the thick of it. The DC December. Uh, send us a tweet. Use the hashtag DC December and um, talk DC Comics to us. There you go. There you go. Dutters. You got anything <laughs> I going on? I don't know what's going on. She's Kate Dutters on the Twitters. Yeah. On the, yes. On the twits. You, you want to be on Piano Red? <laughs> sure. <laughs> Apparently, everybody in Pittsburgh Look talks about porta potties. Yeah. Do you have you noticed I, that? I, I guess that's a it's thing. Gonna, 2015 year of the porta potty. Write that down. <laughs> <laughs> Awesome, Chilla. Chilla, Chilla on the Twitters. Chilla. John Chilla on Facebook. 
chill a photo on the DeviantArt. And, and we'll see, because I'm, I'm sure both of us will be commenting on our on our tech swap here as yes. I figure out how to use it. I, I lost it tech already. Tech swap 2015. This is, this is why I was afraid to get a watch. I lost it already. Uh, but I'll figure out how the Pebble Watch works, and you'll figure out how Google Glass works. And uh, I can't wait. To, it, you you, you got to be doing that with the, uh, with the kit, right? Oh, yeah. That's going to be, oh, a, big thing that's for gonna you. be a big thing for so. me. That's why I figure if anything else, you're getting a lot of use out of that. Mm -hmm. So that'll work out real well. So, all right, with that, thanks, guys. Thank you to our awesome chat room. Uh, Bobby FJ Town intern Mike helping out on the ones and twos. That's the descriptions and the tweets. Uh, Juggalo John oh. Chachi says, and a bunch of people slamming it in there wheels is in there too uh check us out at may or at awesome cast on the twitters awesome cast on facebook google plus live.sogertronmedia.com every tuesday night at 6 30 p.m after the break for the holiday in the new year in 2015 <laughs> uh so with that again thanks our cha awesome chat room you've been our awesome audience have an awesome new year This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. Do you like professional wrestling? Want your discussions? No holds barred. Check out wrestlingmayhemshow.com for all the wrestling podcast flavor you can handle.